again, just going back on the point you were saying that you know we have to play to our strengths. Um, you know, what kind of um, industries have you noticed that are, are, are looking at the Philippines versus you know elsewhere in Asia? What kind of what kind of businesses are are we attracting? Yeah. Well, specifically for us, I think. Um, I have to take the question into two areas or three, okay. I'd say. So the first is that when we were dealing, um, we had a specific project with the UK government that's kind of finished, but we still do the work. We're still very active. We were very heavily involved in food and beverage and consumer goods, right? Okay. Uh, and that, the Philippine market is attractive for that because of the 110. Uh, it's a very young population, uh, therefore it's dynamic. So and we still see that, and I mentioned obviously in terms of food imports, we've done particularly well with British pork exporters. So last year up 34% um, to a record figure. Now, the other area I've mentioned is specifically on energy. Mm -hmm. So renewable energy will be a key focus in the Philippines. Are there opportunities there? You think? I think there is. I mean, obviously, they've decided you can have 100% renewable uh, foreign. Sorry, foreign investment can be 100% renewable energy. Uh, the UK has exper expertise in there. I Absolutely. think people will start to look at that. I think then linking that is the infrastructure projects. Okay. Now, UK companies are involved. Um, they tend to be involved though as part of a, an overall contract so that they designed. And, and the question then is to look at how they can further facilitate companies being involved. And will that require, coming back to the earlier discussion, on barriers they can invest, right? Because that may make a factor. Sure. And what I raise this, I think those are areas they can come into, right? Uh, education as well has always been a very close area. Um, a lot of obviously skilled companies in that area. And education is always going to be a key demand, particularly in a country with a growing population, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's something to highlight. I'd say that's also an advantage of the Philippines because, as you know, there are countries in the world which have a declining population Absolutely. or aging population yeah. is a better way of putting it. The Philippines is young and dynamic and that is a big factor as well so I, I think there are definite areas that companies can be interested in um, and we've just got to a keep that momentum going forward and keep highlighting to people there are these opportunities because I guess the other thing I come to is, you know, if you're looking at the UK, first of all, of course, you've got to look at the own economic challenges of the UK market. Um, second to that, of course, is where do they operate? Traditionally, obviously, Europe is next door, so it right, right. tends to be advantageous. But then, of course, we had the, the Brexit vote. Um, and the actual leaving of the EU was December 2020. The vote was 2016, but we actually left in 2020. You were mentioning cybersecurity yeah. earlier, and you said that you know you took a moment there to say that that's an important. Yeah, I think field. it is. Are there opportunities there as well in terms of you know um, British yeah, and yeah, Philippine yeah. cooperation? Oh, I think so, definitely. I mean, we've got a few companies already. Um, as I said, one of, one of our members is CyberQ. Okay. Uh, they're a UK company, uh, but they also have a Phil Philippine affiliate okay. and one in the US. And I think cybersecurity is a significant area. It's been highlighted also by President Marcos. Uh, and if you look at cybersecurity, it cuts, it cuts across not just financial institutions, sure. but all institutions. Right. Uh, I mean, many companies need to protect their data. Right. Uh, so I think cybersecurity will be a continuing need, particularly as any country, and the Philippines will, will, will go that way, as more and more of the e-commerce is developed. Um, we've seen e-commerce develop strongly during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, in all fairness, there's been a 
reversion back. I mean, you can see that from the moles, from people who have gone back to the traditional form. Right. But nonetheless, the the deals or the business transactions in e-commerce are much higher now than they were three years ago. And I think that's going to continue. I mean, look at the growth in Gcash and these things, right? Yeah. And all that, obviously, cybersecurity is key. So right. yes, it will be a key factor. Right. You, you were mentioning earlier how good it was for some of our key officials um, take the time to go to, to London and promote the Philippines. Uh, are you seeing similar promotional efforts from our neighbors here? And uh, Oh, for sure. I mean, your neighbors will always be very active, yeah. right? And yeah, I also want to be, and, and some of them have long-standing relations. I mean, right. let's not like, forget. I yeah, mean, the Commonwealth. Uh, really. You know, the Commonwealth. Yeah. The UK has very strong ties with Singapore, with Malaysia. Malaysia. It's had long-standing ties with, with Thailand, actually. Right. So the Philippines, of course, not that, but, but it's being developed. Okay. Uh, if I look at some of the institutions we work with, I mean, there's one called the UK ASEAN Business Council. You know, they, you'll see a lot of activities for Indonesia, for Malaysia, for Singapore, Vietnam. So I, I can't underscore enough that I believe that the visits by the economic team do have a very beneficial impact, but you've got to keep the momentum going. Right. Right. So it kind of needs, you know, further reinforcement, right, that the Philippines continues to try and open, continues to open up, uh, that there are success stories here that the government, as stated, would obviously welcome to get much higher foreign direct investment. And I think there's a genuine desire in this administration to actually open up the economy. Right. And, you know, I think the last time we met, you were saying you were cautiously optimistic about how things were going. Do you still feel the same way? Yeah, I do. I mean, look, we, we started off this year, or the end of last year, actually, yeah. uh, and we had our one of our traditional, you know, and we put together a wish list. And the wish list was, uh, two of the first on the wish list have already happened. One was to for the extension of the lowered tariffs on, on meat imports. And the other one was for the ratification of RCEP. So it's a good start. Yeah, well, we'll just take another quick break. This is Business and Politics, and as I said, we're talking to the British Chamber President, Chris Nelson.